Well, hello again. This is Dr. Amelia Fox with Real Flight Training. Uh, we left off at fixed wing flight, and I'd like to transfer you over to another aircraft before we go to quadcopter. There is an intermediate aircraft. It's called the tricopter. And a tricopter has some, some of the characteristics, the tricopter 900 has some of the characteristics of fixed wing flight, but it also has some of the characteristics of a rotocopter. And so it's a great intermediary tool to learn to fly with. And in this case, what I'd like you to do is set up your physics so that they're realistic. And this is important so that you get good command of yaw. The left stick in um, real flight, when you're working with quadcopters in particular, is dependent upon your being able to yaw. Let's turn on the vertical axis. Now it shows that we have different modes here. If I use my, my mode switch, so if I just raise my copter up, and you notice it's moving, it's moving a bit. I'm going to yaw back so that the tail is. You want to make sure that it's not moving. If it's moving and you've shut off your wind, page down, page down, if you shut off your turbulence, if the aircraft is moving, it needs to be trimmed. And this is a good test for it. So I'm going to trim. If you notice uh, down here uh, on the radio, on the bottom trim, on the yaw trim, I'm just going to, you notice how it turned red. I'm just going to trim it over and you see my aircraft starts to spin. I'm going to trim it back till it turns black and my aircraft should be stable. All right, if I'm properly calibrated, my aircraft should be stable. Now, I'm going to move into alt hold and you notice it's now sensitive to environmental factors. And if I move it to stabilize, excuse me, stabilize, it's not only sensitive to environmental factors, it doesn't have any altitude hold. And so it's very jumpy and bouncy. So what we're going to do is we're going to keep this training mode in loiter. Hit reset. And we're going to fly this aircraft just, just above our heads, just by simply lifting the aircraft up. Now to go forward, I have to pitch my nose forward, correct? This is not a matter of a throttle. The throttle, the throttle raises the aircraft up and down. The throttle propels the aircraft into the air, but it doesn't make it go anywhere. The pitch, the right stick, is what makes it go. Now you can use the left stick to turn, just like you can turn the tail, but you, on this tricopter you might tend to overturn the tail. And so you want to use the right stick predominantly for your turn, but you still need some tail turn. You still need to spin on the vertical axis. So if you could just practice doing some really nice smooth figure eights out here just a little bit above your head. And you're going to again use the right stick to drive the aircraft forward, but turn the tail. So you have a nice, smooth, and efficient turn. All right, so figure eights are important. Um, they're very freeing, they feel really good. You do have to turn the tail, the tail has to turn. But this is a, a right stick dominant activity. All right, so we practice right stick dominance now, as opposed to the left stick dominance we taught you in fixed wing flight. We want you to, in the fixed wing aircraft, you definitely want to turn the tail dominantly with banking on the wings. In this case, you're gonna, you're gonna bank into a turn and turn the tail behind it. So just practice this, it's a lot of fun. You can see the, you can see the camera. You notice you have to pitch forward or you don't go forward. All right. When you feel comfortable about that, have a little fun. Just fly around, have a good time. Fly straight into your face. It's really good practice. Watch what'll happen. <gasps> Didn't hurt at all, did it? All right. That's a great thing to practice. It's a lot of fun. It's good exercise.